Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. This is a travel guide for Fitness Street in Phuket, Thailand. If you're looking at traveling there and you need help with budgeting, how much should you bring or how much will you spend, accommodation, scooter hire, taxis, and a whole lot more, stick around because in this video, we're gonna go through all of that coming up. Jap, you can't ignore it. I'm transforming now these cars and planes. I'm always boarding. Just out to Charlotte. Fourth, fourth day here. Four days. Champagne period. Finish friends on my face. Looking like I'm from the deep. These no cardiacs. Fuck it deep, 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 bro. I can make it in my seat, bro. Do you and do me, bro. Welcome back. So 20th of February, 2020, I thought I'd put this travel guide together to help every one of you that have questions about Fitness Street and all sorts of questions from how much money do I need? How much money will I spend on food, uh, taxi, scooter rental? Where should I stay? How much is accommodation? Uh, how much is training, training packages? Should I stay on site or off site? and travel insurance and so many more different questions that I get about this amazing street in Phuket, Thailand. So it's called Sui Thai, that's the name of the street, but I like to call it Fitness Street because I believe it's everything that encompasses fitness on one street in Phuket, Thailand. So, wow, this video is gonna be a long video, I apologize, but it's gonna be jam-packed with information. I have decided I'm gonna timestamp this video down below in the description, you'll see timestamps. So if you need to skip to a section of the video because you only want to know about, you know, training costs or food budgeting, then just click on the timestamp. It'll take you straight to that section of the video. It will just save your time. I don't want to waste anybody's time if you want to watch 30 minutes, but you, you know, you only care about two minutes of the 30 minutes or what, however long this video is going to be. So I have recorded my screen. So I'm going to show you my budgeting spreadsheet. Uh, you'll also be able to download this. It will help you plan your fitness training adventures of a lifetime on Fitness Street. And uh, I just want to quickly point out that please ignore the amount of money that my girlfriend and I spent on our most recent trip to Fitness Street in October, November last year. We spent like 4,500 Australian dollars for both of us for one month of training, accommodation, food, travel insurance, everything combined. Don't freak out too much guys. It's not gonna cost you that much money. The reason why it's cost us that much money is because I have a business where I shoot videos and people ask me questions about what is this place like to eat at? What is this place like to train at? So I spend the money to get the content and that's why it costs me much more than what it's gonna cost you. So when I show you my spreadsheet, it's gonna have all of my figures in it. Just ignore most of those figures because you'll find that you can just take bits and pieces from my spreadsheet and you can customize your own trip to make your trip the best and cheapest or most cost-effective trip of a lifetime and literally you can for one month of training accommodation food and everything combined uh, to be conservative you wouldn't spend any more than twelve hundred fifteen hundred dollars max per month of training that includes everything just by using everything that we talk about um, in this video so remember customize the advice that I give in this video to your own specific circumstances and you'll be fine so let's go into my laptop and I'll show you my spreadsheet first and foremost now, as you can see, the total amount here, which you must ignore for two people, that's my girlfriend and I, for one month is $4,500. That is, of course, all of these subtitle totals added together that are associated with airfares, accommodation, cash, incidentals, which includes travel insurance, taxis to and from the airport. So everything is thrown into that price. Now, I'm gonna break this down by first and foremost talking about accommodation where to stay, where should you stay, how much should you spend on accommodation. So for our most recent trip, I only stayed at four different places. So I've got separate walking tour videos in separate videos where I shoot uh, at Phuket Muay Thai House, amazing little place on Fitness Street. I go and check out the separate video there. 
Uh, it's on Fitness Street, centrally located, quite uh, cheap, 600, uh, sorry, 270 bucks for a week. Uh, Hivetel, we stayed at for a week, which is near Tiger Muay Thai Beachside. Um, it's the closest accommodation that you'll get next to Tiger Muay Thai Beachside. Then of course, Cocoville for a week and Coco Retreat for another week. So I've got down here some discussion points around each of these topics that I'm gonna cover. The first one being accommodation. So honestly guys, the easiest way of organizing your accommodation for Fitness Street is to book and pay for it online in advance. You don't have to do this. I've literally booked accommodation one day before and sometimes I've even walked into places and just paid for my, and booked my accommodation on the spot when I was single and traveling on my own, right? Now it's different. Uh, I, I usually plan my accommodation out in advance a little bit uh, with my girlfriend. So we book online through booking.com or Agoda. Just pick, pick a website and, and just book it through there. Uh, and my next best piece of advice is to find accommodation that is close as, po as close as possible to Fitness Street. I made this mistake because I've been to Fitness Street now seven or eight times over the last few years. When I first uh, arrived at Fitness Street, I was really annoyed at the fact that I booked accommodation that was a 40 minute walk from uh, Fitness Street and I never had a scooter um, that I was riding to Fitness Street. So when you're training and you're going between your, uh, your training and your accommodation, you want your accommodation to be as close as possible so you can run back, have a shower, and then come back out onto Fitness Street for your next class. I can't stress this enough. I made this mistake when I first started my Fitness Street adventures. Uh, make sure you book on the street or as near to the street as possible. Um, and I'll take you over to a map on your screen right now so I can show this to you visually. This is booking.com's website. Um, this is Sui Taid, this long street here. I like to call it Fitness Street. No, I don't wanna go there. Uh, I'll zoom in a little bit. So this is Sui Taid. I like to call it Fitness Street. And all of these little bubbles here are accommodation options for you. Now, pretty much any of these bubbles that you see on your screen are perfectly fine. I would stay on the street if you can. Like, for example, Phuket Siam Villas is quite nice from what I hear. Uh, this place here, Dragon Bungalow, is quite nice from what I hear. Um, we have two home and six pack cottage. Now, as you can see on your screen, I've selected 30 nights accommodation just to demonstrate this video. So if I go back from the 14th of October to the 13th of November for one month, uh, two adults, uh, I've already hit search. If I click on the map and I'll zoom back in, now you'll see here that I've got options for six pack, which is fine. This is on a side street to Fitness Street and is definitely within walking distance to places like Phuket Top Team, uh, which you may have seen in my other videos. I've shot videos at Top Team, uh, been there forever. They have an incredible reputation for training true fighters and um, places like Happy Cottage. But as you can see, $815 for a month at Six Pack Cottage is perfectly fine. I would pay that. Um, and if you have a look here, Phuket Top Team actually have uh, accommodation on site. They have little bungalows behind the gym. So if you go to Top Team's website, you can learn more about how much it costs to stay on campus. Uh, over here we have Tiger Muay Thai, the main campus. They also have on site accommodation, uh, which you can get the details of on their website. You can either stay on campus or off campus. They have off campus accommodation, which is scattered on and around Fitness Street, but definitely go to their website and uh, check that out for yourself uh, and even ask them directly because they're obviously the experts when it comes to their own accommodation. But to be honest with you, uh, Fitness Street is quite a long street. So if you're planning to train predominantly at Tiger Muay Thai main campus, then it's probably best to find accommodation that is relatively close to Tiger Muay Thai um, on Fitness Street. I wouldn't be staying on the opposite end of Fitness Street and then having to walk all the way down Fitness Street to get to Tiger Muay Thai. I personally wouldn't do that. Um, but then we'll get to scooter hire in just a second. And if you decide to hire a scooter, that's gonna remove any of those problems that you might have with walking the street. 
So that's what I suggest when it comes to accommodation. Now go back to my spreadsheet. The last thing I want to mention is Tiger Muay Thai versus Tiger Muay Thai Beachside. Uh, in terms of where they're located, Tiger Muay Thai Beachside is actually not on Fitness Street. It's actually located down here on the bay, Chalong Bay. This is Hivetel. This is where we stayed last year for one week. It's really, really nice. I do separate videos on this accommodation. I'll go and check them out. I'll link them up. But right across the road from Hivetel is Tiger Muay Thai Beachside down here. But I need to assure you guys that this is not a beach. This is Chalong Bay this area here, and you can't swim in this at all. You just can't swim uh, in Chalong Bay, right? But it's not on Fitness Street. Tiger Muay Thai Beachside is about a 10, 15 minute scooter ride from Fitness Street. I'll go back to my spreadsheet now. I'll talk about cash withdrawals and in terms of how much cash would you take out and whether you should you know, use ATM machines and things of that nature. I won't go into too much detail on this. This is quite a big topic. But I've got a couple of point forms here uh, that I'll talk about. So I use my credit card and I select credit when I take cash out on an ATM machine on Fitness Street. There are plenty of ATM machines on Fitness Street. You can also exchange cash at various different cash exchange places. You'll find that the exchange rates at these cash exchange places are a little bit better than what you'll get from an ATM machine. Um, I need to point out that uh, there's a few things that you really need to know about these ATM machines in Phuket, um, usually all over Thailand, but specifically in Phuket. The cash withdrawal limits are around 10 to 50,000 Thai baht per transaction. I've tried playing with this myself. Uh, for me, I can only get out no more than around 10,000 baht per transaction. So if you're trying to get 20, 30, 40, 50,000 baht in one transaction, it might reject that. But if you try 10, you probably have better success. Don't ask me why, whether it's a limitation of your local bank, whether it's a limitation of the actual ATM machine or the bank that the ATM machine belongs to, I don't really know. But 10 to 50,000, I've heard of people getting 30,000 out in one transaction, but for me, 10,000 is usually my withdrawal limit. So you can see here, I've made three separate withdrawals from ATM machines on Fitness Street, uh, usually around 10 to 12,000 baht per transaction. Now, I always suggest pay cash where possible. I get this question a lot. Um, when you're going to these small protein shake bars or when you're getting private lessons with a trainer uh, at any of these training camps, I usually pay cash because it's a lot easier and they'll only accept cash. Uh, but if you go to big training camps like Tiger Muay Thai, Top Team, uh, and bigger accommodation places and bigger restaurants and bigger eateries, they will accept cards. But typically, I personally, I prefer to just take cash with me and spend uh, and, and all my, pay for all my food and all of my one-off private sessions with cash. But that's me personally. Now, the next point I want to mention is the withdrawal fee is really, really expensive compared to other countries I've traveled to. Thailand has extremely high ATM withdrawal fees. Uh, that's why I limit my withdrawal fees as much as possible by limiting the number of transactions I make at an ATM machine. 220 baht is the current ATM withdrawal fee as of 2020 or 2019. I've been to Thailand now maybe a dozen times over the past six or seven years and the withdrawal fee seems to go up every single year. Uh, some banks weren't even charging it. Now they all seem to be charging 200 to 220 baht per transaction. I think there's one ATM that's only charging 150, but this works out to be about 10 Australian dollars per withdrawal that you make from an ATM machine. That's not including the bank fees of your local bank and the conversion fee of around one to 3%. Um, it does get very expensive, guys, if you're going to an ATM machine every day or every second or third day, I don't suggest, I, someone's trying to ring me, I don't suggest uh, using ATM machines on a very regular basis. Um, I think Eon is, um, still has uh, no charge on withdrawals, but I think someone told me, and I can't confirm this, but someone did mention that they're also now charging 220 per transaction. 
Anyway, let's move along. This is a very important point. Uh, I've met quite a few guys on Fitness Street that have lost their ATM cards using the ATM machines on Fitness Street because unfortunately, the way they've programmed these machines uh, is unlike anywhere else you'll find in Europe. When you take money out, the card comes first before the cash. For some reason in Thailand, the cards give you the cash first and then the card. Now, if you've had a big night out or you're just not thinking, you'll take the cash and you'll leave. And some people forget to take their card. What happens is the machine will take the card back in and you'll lose your card. So just remember, cash comes out first before the card in Thailand. You have to be super mindful of that. Uh, don't lose your card because if you're only using one card, then you might be, might be stuffed. Anyway, let's go to the next section, which is uh, incidentals, including travel insurance. Now guys, um, I need to point this out real quick. I'm not an expert in travel insurance, but uh, I have a friend that works in travel insurance. I've also inquired with World Nomads, the travel insurance company I use personally. They do not cover combat sports, i.e. Muay Thai. So if you're watching this video and you're a pro fighter, and you're wanting to go to Fitness Street to do professional fighting, or you know you take, you take Muay Thai seriously or BJJ seriously, always check the terms and conditions of your travel insurance. If you get knocked out or something bad happens to you in the ring and you get normal, regular travel insurance, you're probably not gonna be covered. Uh, this has happened and where travel insurance companies will not pay if they find out that you're doing combat sports uh, and you were injured as a result of combat sports. So I know for a fact, and I've checked this with World Nomads and I've read their fine print, they do not cover uh, combat sports, but they do cover injuries related to general fitness, which they don't specifically define what that is, but they do state combat sports is not covered. So check with your insurance company on whether combat sports is covered or not. Okay, the next question I usually get is, when I arrive on Fitness Street, do I need to, you know, do I need to book, uh, well, how far in advance do I need to book and pay for my, uh, sorry, my training? The truth is, guys, you can literally just roll up on the day before or the day of to train and pay for your training for a day in advance or a week in advance or a month in advance. Um, I honestly, for my private sessions, I will pay for them and book them one day in advance. So you don't have to worry about organizing all of that in your home country before you travel to Fitness Street. You can literally just show up and the day before to sign up for group classes, sign up for private classes. That is perfectly fine if you wanna do that. Let's talk about training costs real quick. Now, I've written this out as point form on your screen right now. Now, private Muay Thai sessions usually cost between 700 to 800 baht per one hour sessions. Again, organize one day or two days in advance um, with the trainer of your choice. You can pick whoever you want, whoever you feel most comfortable with or resonates most with you. Uh, and you can book them in advance by one or two days. And typically 700 to 800 baht is what you'll pay unless you're doing specialty one-on-one -on -one sessions around fighting or BJJ, you'll probably pay several thousand baht per one hour session, but that's not for this video. This video is for someone uh, that's just starting a fitness journey. So if you're looking at doing group classes, you've never been to Fitness Street before, I highly suggest just roll up, try everything. The group classes uh, usually cost 350 to 400 baht per group class or you can do two group classes in one day for about 500 to 600 baht, which is really, really good value. They go for two hours and it's really intense, it's really hardcore, and pretty much every training center on and around Fitness Street have a similar price structure around their group classes and even their private classes. They all charge around the same price. I've trained at all of them in the area, it's around 350, 400, two, two hour classes, morning and afternoon, you know, eight or 10 in the morning, four to six or 4.30 to 6.30 or five to seven. It's all pretty much the same. Um, just sign up the day before or even the day off and just try everything. That's, what, that's my best piece of advice. Uh, the next one on my list here is Unit 27. We did this one last year. They literally have on their website six, a six session pack 
for 2,580 baht or 123 Australian dollars for six sessions, which I believe are valid for one month, but just check that with the staff. I'm on their website right now. This is where you'll see it, Unit 27. Uh, their pricing here, 2,580. You get six sessions and you get access to the sauna and the ice bath, which is incredible after your training session at Unit 27. This is what my girlfriend did last year. And if you are not certain about training on Fitness Street and you're interested in CrossFit style training or functional training and not Muay Thai or martial arts, then Unit 27 is definitely a place where you'll find you know, Instagram fitness influencers or even just people starting their fitness journey with no uh, experience in CrossFit. So all levels are catered for at Unit 27. Definitely go and check these guys out. They are located on Fitness Street right here. I'll show you the map. You'll see them right, oh, there you go, right there, Unit 27 right here. Uh, the next one is Tiger Muay Thai and then Titan Fitness. Now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on these two, Titan Fitness. We trained there for a week. Uh, we did daily videos there, go and check them out. They have their own accommodation. They've got their own three-story gym. Uh, just off Fitness Street, you'll see Titan Fitness, which is just down here, which you probably won't see on the map, unfortunately. But you have CMT Muay Thai here, you have TNY over here, and you have Titan Fitness's boot camp here, and then you got their accommodation is just where I'm circling on your screen right now. This is Fitness Street just here. And you've got Mr. Joms, which is just over here. You must go to Mr. Joms. Must, 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 must. Highly recommend that place. It's a little tiny shack looking thing, family run business, but their uh, spicy chicken or whatever it's called. What's it called again? Special chicken. I think it's called the special chicken. Highly recommend it. Uh, this guy and his business are absolutely amazing. Anyway, on a bit of a tangent there, but Titan Fitness is just here. Their accommodation is just there. Uh, and again, check out their website if you want all their details. And then I'll go over to Tiger Muay Thai. Whoops, here we go, Tiger Muay Thai. Now this is their website, their training prices. Um, obviously you can do this on, in your own time, but what I did when I first arrived on Fitness Street years ago, was I did the all-inclusive fitness package for a week. It cost me 5,000 baht, well, actually it was cheaper years ago, around 5,000 baht in 2020 as I shoot this video. Uh, and that includes access to everything, access to the CrossFit classes, access to Muay Thai, access to Western kickboxing or Western boxing, access to everything. And um, all-inclusive is great if you have no idea what you wanna do and you wanna taste a little bit of everything and you wanna go and check out Tiger Muay Thai, right? So 5,000 baht for one week. This is Top Team. Now, Top Team is an amazing little gym. You should definitely check it out. They've got their own prices on their website here. They cover everything from MMA, BJJ to Muay Thai. Um, it's a very small gym, but the quality of their training is second to none, probably the best you'll find on the street, one of the best you'll find on the street when it comes to uh, Muay Thai. And from what I've heard, I'm not an expert, I don't know anything about BJJ or MMA, but the guys I know that are pros in MMA BJJ swear by training at top teams. So they are the prices here, 600 baht all day, all classes for one day. I believe you have access to, I think it's two classes in a single day, check their timetable. And then Dragon Muay Thai is another one that I suggest you check out, which on the map, is somewhere over here. There we go, so there's Fitness Street and then there's Dragon Muay Thai just here. Again, I've done separate videos on Dragon Muay Thai. Okay, so I've got my list here, CMT, TNY, Eagle, Ratachai, Dragon. It goes on and on, guys. I've done separate videos on those, let's move along. So food budget, I get this question a lot. Brad, how much money do I need for food on Fitness Street? It's always a hard question to answer because it really depends on how fancy you are and uh, how much you eat. Like this is a hard question. So typically I find from my own personal experience that you know I can personally get away with about 20 bucks a day on my own eating at really cheap places. But some people prefer you know, to eat more Western style food um, that is not on Fitness Street, then you'll pay a little bit more money. Fitness Street is a little different though because they do have a lot of Western type food there, but it is quite cheap. And the healthy eating bars and restaurants that they have 
on Fitness Street costs no more than around 100 to 150 baht per main. I've taken photos of all the menus at all of the places on Fitness Street. I, you probably would have seen this in separate videos, but literally 150 baht per main is what you would pay uh, on Fitness Street at pretty much any of these restaurants and cafes on the street. So I'll quickly give you an example. So uh, on your screen right now, I've got a food budget guide here, 30 to 40 bucks per day. If you've never been to Fitness Street before, uh, is a good place to start. So the first place I do suggest you check out is Tony's Restaurant. Uh, you'll see the list here. You can always, you know, I'll, as I talk, I'll throw up some photos on the screen of the menu and some of the food as well. But literally, Tony's Restaurant, you should definitely check that place out. It's on Fitness Street. You'll pay no more than around five to six Australian dollars per main, and you'll get incredible food, guys. You have grilled chicken or steamed chicken, sweet potato, steamed vegetables, a little bit of rice on the side. You know, you can chuck in a coconut, a couple of coconuts, a couple of smoothies, um, a little bit of extra, you know, protein on the side or whatever, and pay no more than about 10 bucks after a big meal. That's literally how much you'll pay after a big meal. And it's quite filling, as you can see in the photos. The second one is Thai Thai. Now, Thai Thai is obviously a Thai restaurant. So, you know, we're talking papaya salads, we're talking, you know, you know, curries, we're talking, you know, uh, morning glory, traditional Thai food. Highly suggest this place, guys. Really, really cheap food, amazing turnover, like incredible turnover. You won't get ill. I've never had any bad experiences there. You pay around 20 bucks for two people for, you know, a, a, a dinner or a lunch. So definitely a place worth checking out. I'll throw some of the photos up if I haven't already. The next one is Latte Cafe. Ignore the name, it's not just a cafe. They've got an incredible healthy eating menu as well. You pay about 20 bucks for two people for decently sized, uh, decently sized portions. Next one is Cocoville. Uh, they have the all, they have the, what do they call it? The raw fitness menu. And I uh, pay about seven bucks per main there. Mama's Cafe, highly recommend this place. Uh, five bucks per main. So use these numbers, look at the menus that I throw up on the screen and just piece together an idea of how much you're gonna spend. You'll probably have a couple of mains in a day, a couple of protein shakes. Uh, think about water as well. You pay about 20, 20 baht, 30 baht from memory for 1.5 liter bottles of water. So honestly guys, probably 20, 30 bucks a day is a decent budget for uh, fitness street 30 40 maximum per day for your food budget and the last bit I want to talk about is uh, Taxis now taxis are super expensive in Phuket uh, Their prices are usually fixed. I do recommend if you feel comfortable enough to hire a scooter scooters are dirt cheap there You pay no more than around 3,500 baht per month on average for a scooter Which I believe off the top of my head is about 50 how much is it? 150, 170 Australian dollars for a month. Uh, in terms of fuel, you pay around 40 baht per liter from memory. It's really, really cheap, guys. It is the easiest and cheapest and fastest way of getting between your training uh, camp and your accommodation and anywhere else you want to travel to uh, along Fitness Street because it is a long street. So even getting a scooter from one end of the street to the other is something that my girlfriend and I do. So um, if you can, if you feel comfortable enough, I do suggest hiring a scooter. Scooter rental you can get on a day-to-day -day or a week-to-week -week or a month-to-month -month basis. Obviously, the longer you rent the scooter for, the cheaper it's gonna be. Uh, getting to and from the airport is expensive. Uh, I'll show you on a map, actually. So on your screen, I will show you. Getting to and from Fitness Street is the next thing I wanted to talk about. So getting to Fitness Street. Now, if you tell the taxi driver, I wanna to go to Fitness Street, he's not gonna know what you're talking about because I made it up. Fitness Street is called Soy Taid. Uh, if, you just, if you just say Tiger Muay Thai, the taxi driver will know exactly where to take you because Fitness Street, Soy Taid, Tiger Muay Thai is on the same street as Fitness Street. So. Phuket International Airport is where you fly into. It's about a 40 to 50 minute drive from the airport to Fitness Street. And I've just moved the marker. If I zoom in, Fitness Street is just here. I'll just drag this around. So it's about a 40 minute drive, 50 minute drive, and the cost around a thousand 
1200 baht to get a taxi each way. So taxis are very expensive, but it's the most direct way of getting to and from Fitness Street from the airport. Uh, you can get a mini bus, which I've done before, from memory, costs like 300 baht, but the mini bus stops along the way. You just tell the mini bus driver that you want to go to Chalong, and then you'll tell them specifically that you want to go to you know, this accommodation on Fitness Street in Chalong. They'll take you there for like 300 baht. You will save money, but it will take you longer to get to. So it just depends on how long your flight was. Uh, you might just want to get straight to your accommodation if you've flown 22 hours to get to Fitness Street. So I appreciate getting a taxi after a 22 hour, uh, two, two flights, 22 hours. So. Uh, what else is there? The next one on my list is you can use the Grab app. Now, Grab is the equivalent of Uber. Uh, you can download the app on your phone. I've never used Grab, but a few people in the forum have talked about using Grab and it has cost them like 150, 200 baht. By using Grab, you can download this like Uber and get a Grab from the airport to Fitness Street. Let me know how you go with that one. I've never done it myself, but apparently it is a cheaper option. And the last thing I want to talk about is the cheapest time to visit. Now, I do get this question a lot. There is a monsoon season in Phuket where it rains like crazy and it's really, really humid. It doesn't matter, guys. I've been to Fitness Street all year round. Uh, I've trained during the monsoon season. I've trained during the peak. I've trained during the, the, the driest part of the year. Honestly, when it comes to training, it doesn't make a difference. Training still continues on irrespective of the monsoon season or not. The monsoon season is around middle of May to October. It's not exactly those months. Uh, it does continue to rain a lot early November, but typically May to October, six months of the year, five, six months of the year is the monsoon. Uh, that's when your accommodation is gonna be the cheapest. Things are generally quite cheap that time of the year. So if you're really on a shoestring budget, then definitely look at training uh, that time of the year. Obviously the busiest time and the most expensive time of the year is gonna be around Christmas, January, February is the peak tourist season, the peak training season. Everyone wants, wants to train there. Things cost more money, food costs more money, everything costs more money. Um, so personally, I don't like going to Fitness Street January, February, sometimes I have been, but it's not my personal choice. I like going around October, right on the fringe, but that's me personally. Guys, and that is it. I hope you enjoyed this super long video. It was insanely long, I apologize. But again, I've timestamped it. And um, I have set up a Facebook group for people that have been to Fitness Street and are going to Fitness Street. I'll link it up. Go and join the Facebook group. Ask your questions in there. I don't know everything. There are people in there that have been there and trained there longer than me and that they're, they're amazing support and help. There's always someone in the, the forum now to help you with your questions. Um, there are solo female travelers in there. There are people that have been there multiple times, people have never been there. Go and join the Facebook group um, and meet up with people in there before you travel to Fitness Street. You'll find people will be crossing over with your travel dates. Uh, people have met each other on the street through meeting through the forum. So I set up the group because people ask for it. There's, at the moment, there's three or 400 people in there. Go and check it out. And that's it. If you have any questions, guys, let me know. And I hope you have the time of your life on Fitness Street. It will blow your mind if you've never been there before. Uh, please send me a direct message on Instagram or email me directly with any other questions. Otherwise, I might see you on Fitness Street. See you guys. Oh.